It actually happened about two weeks ago. People were sitting there with their laptops out, working as normal. A robber came past on a bike. He jumped off, came in with a gun, put a gun to the people's heads, took all their stuff and left. When you're walking around, always walk so you can see the traffic coming towards you. Don't walk around with anything that you're not prepared to lose. Watch out for scams on Facebook Marketplace. I spoke to three friends of mine who have more than 10 years experience living in Colombia. Compiled this list with them. You're definitely going to find something super useful within this video, so keep watching. If you want to skip ahead, everything's been chaptered. Go down, check the description, and you can just click forward if you're interested in a certain subject. Let's begin. So first of all, you land in the airport, you probably want to get a taxi. Taxis have mixed reviews. I've heard of a few dodgy taxi drivers. I would recommend a rideshare like Uber, DD, InDriver they have here. All three of them I've used with no issues. Issues. The price should be about 80 to 100,000 pesos, which is about 20 to 25 USD. It's better always to use rideshare apps because you can actually track who's your driver, where they pick you up, where you're going, instead of just some random taxi you've jumped in. If you need to take a taxi though, the white ones are the safest. They're registered airport taxis, so use them. Learn some Spanish. Not everyone's gonna have the time to get fluent or have a lot of lessons, but at least learn, you know, hello, can I have can I order? Where is this? Just the basic shit so you're not completely lost it can really help you get out of a lot of tricky situations. All else failing, get Google Translate on the phone. It's kind of whatever, but better than nothing. So you arrive in the city. First of all, do some research on which places are safe and which places are not safe because not every place is equal. Usually you'll be staying in a hostel, hotel, Airbnb or something like that. So you'll have a local contact. Just ask them, say, which places are safe? Where can I go? Always before you go, just check because some places a lot higher chance that something might happen to you. Other places are, you know, more or less safe all the time. Don't flash expensive things. Don't walk around with gold Rolex, five chains and shit like that because that will make you target number one. Everyone will see you and be like, this guy has money or this girl has money. Time to rob you. Better to keep a low profile, avoid flashing things. When walking around, don't walk around with anything that you're not prepared to lose. If you have cash, don't walk around with like $500. Everything's cheap here, so you're probably not even gonna spend that. Keep maybe 50, $100 on you. And if you lose it, it's not that much of a big deal. Passport, never take your passport out. Maybe take a photo, keep a photo on your phone, but don't take your passport, because if you lose that, you're fucked. When you're walking, this is actually a good tip. I never thought of this one before. A lot of the criminals, they get around on motorbikes. When you're walking around, always walk so you can see the traffic coming towards you. Because if you can see the traffic, you're less of an easy target. Imagine you're walking and the, the bike is coming from behind you. It's easy to just bang, grab something, your bag or something and keep going. Before you know what's happened, they're gone. But at least if you can see them coming, maybe you can dodge or you know they might not target you because they're like, okay, it's a bit harder to rob them. Thieves look for people who are vulnerable and distracted. So don't be walking around with your AirPods, singing in the street, having a you know chilled out day. That just makes you that much easier of a target to, to become a victim. I just wanna say that I'm not trying to spread fear about Colombia. It's actually a super safe place if you take the right precautions and you're educated before you come here and you don't do stupid things. A lot of you come from the States. Let me just list a few of the cities who have a higher murder rate than Medellin, where I live. Baltimore, Detroit, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Kansas City, Mobile, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Oakland, St. Louis, Memphis, Albuquerque, Chicago, Houston, but still everyone visits those places. Just be educated and be safe. A lot of people do this here. I don't do it, but if you want to be extra careful and you have like a really nice new iPhone 13 or something, if you have a lot of your contacts and work stuff and important things on there, back it up first and also consider not taking it out. Buy a cheap phone. You can get phones for like 100, 200 Android phones with all the apps and things on nowadays. So just take that out if you're gonna party or something. So if you've lost it, it's not that big a deal. Rather than losing your brand new iPhone, which is worth, you know, a grand or two and has all the information on there. One of my friends told me this. He carries two wallets. One wallet tethers to his pants. That's the real wallet. Another wallet in his normal pocket. That's to give robbers if they come and harass him. Maybe five bucks, 10 bucks in there. Because I have heard stories of robbers trying to get people and and they've had no money, nothing to steal, and they get mad and then they do something to them. So better to have something to give them, just have that little wallet, which you don't care about losing. In terms of taking out money, always use ATMs within malls. They're a bit more official. If anything happens, like you get scammed or something, you know, sometimes they have these 
things where they like they get you pin or whatever i feel like it's a lot easier to track and complain about it maybe get your money back if it's an established atm at the bank in a mall rather than some dodgy one in some empty alley also if you're in a mall you're surrounded by people you know you're less likely for someone to be waiting behind you to jack you once you take out your money also on the topic of atms this is not really a safety tip but it's a good tip to have a lot of people don't know that one of the last steps before you take your money out it'll ask you do you accept our conversion rate? And you can accept or you can decline. If you accept, you accept the conversion rate that the ATM local bank is offering you, which is often, you know, five, 10% higher than the actual exchange rate. So you should always decline, always decline it because then you get the actual exchange rates and you can save a lot of money that way. This is something I always do because I have my camera equipment and laptops and stuff sometimes. If you have valuables, always, always take an Uber. Sometimes I could walk 10 minutes, but why every uber here is basically even if you want to go half an hour across town it might be five dollars maximum so just for peace of mind just take the uber don't walk if you have anything valuable on you so if you go somewhere to work for the day as a lot of people do there's a lot of digital nomads in town sometimes they have like a terrace or an outside area and they have inside area as well try and be as far away from the entrance as you can be. I would recommend sitting inside, even sitting upstairs, the hardest place to access. It actually happened about two weeks ago. There's a popular cafe where a lot of people go, a lot of people work and has an outside area with some tables and things. So people were sitting there with their laptops out, working as normal. And then a robber came past on a bike. I guess someone else was driving the bike. He jumped off, came in with a gun, put a gun to the people's heads who were sitting outside, took all their stuff, all their laptops and left. And obviously that's, an easy target because he wants to get away as quick as possible too. If you make it harder by sitting further away, you're gonna be less of a target. This goes without being said, but people have done this and it's extremely stupid. Don't leave things unattended. Sometimes I work in a cafe, I have all my laptops set up, my headphones, my lenses, all the shit out. And then I just need to go to the bathroom for like two minutes, pack it all up, unplug it, go, and then come back and set it all up again. Yes, it's annoying, but once again, don't trust anyone. Don't ask the staff, hey, can you look after my stuff for two minutes? Because when you come back, if it's gone, what the fuck are you gonna do? Who are you gonna blame? They're not gonna pay for your shit. Don't walk around unnecessarily. I go to a language exchange every Tuesday night and it's just like 10 minutes away from my house. But it's like eight, nine, sometimes 10 o'clock by the time I finish. I don't wanna deal with anything. There's some quiet areas I gotta walk past. I'd rather just pay the $2 and get home without stress. Also don't stand around on the street unnecessarily holding your phone and looking lost and oh fucking where's this place? If you need to look for directions, obviously we're tourists, we look at Google Maps and stuff sometimes. Walk inside a shop, look at the directions. Okay, I know what, where I need to go. Memorize it, put it away and keep walking. If you're looking, like you're completely lost, tourists just arrived today holding your phone like this, someone's gonna rub you. If you have any other tips that I haven't mentioned, throw them in the comments, I'd love to see them. Now we go to buying things. Never pay anyone on any platform at any time without receiving the goods or the services before. You will get scammed. Watch out for scams on Facebook Marketplace. I was gonna sell my camera and this guy messaged me and said, hey, I wanna get the camera. Can I send someone to come and have a look at it? And while he's there, I'll do a bank transfer. He sent this guy, this guy looked at it. He was like, okay, we'll take it. Then I got the bank transfer from the guy and I looked at it and because I do video and film and things like that, I'm, I have a keen eye. So I looked at it, I was like, huh, this text doesn't match the rest of the text and it's a little bit like unaligned. And it was from Bank of Bogota or something like that. So then I Googled Bank of Bogota transaction reference. I looked at the transaction reference. I looked at the one he sent me. It was different. It had minute differences. Text was different. The lining was different. So then I asked the guy about it and he just ghosted. He never responded again. So obviously that was a scam. I easily could have lost 500 bucks, but just because I was a little bit more careful, I managed to avoid it. And the scams are getting better and better and better. They're actually really good. I'm kind of impressed. I was looking for a place. I posted on a Facebook group. Also, if you post on any social media, it's fine, but just beware that you're gonna get all types of scammers come and try and <laughs> come and try and get you. So I posted about renting a place and someone messaged me and said, hey, I got this place for you. They sent me their website. I looked at the website. This website looks awesome. It had all the places up there. It had the price, it had photos. It even had a little, what do you call it? Like inquiry form. You could fill it out, put your email and send it. And it was like sent. It looked completely, completely legit. But one thing I noticed was they had places which normally would be like maybe a thousand dollars a month for $500 a month. This goes back to if it's too good to be true it's often a scam i just felt bad about it i don't know something felt dirty 
and I just like, I didn't do it. Like three days later, I see this guy posting on a group with the same message that I got from this person with the same website, with the same everything, saying that he got in touch with his people. He even got so far as they sent him a contract. He signed the contract, gave him his passport, all the details. They sent it back being like, successful, here's a contract for rental agreement. So after the contract, they're asking for the deposit deposit to this bank account, about $500. So he did that, all done. He's got his agreement, he's deposited, he's ready to go. So then he's messaging them and he's like, hey, I wanna check out the place at one on Saturday. And they're like, okay, cool, let's do it. But then Saturday morning, they're like, hey, we have a problem, can you come at 10? And he's like, okay, I'll come at 10. Uh, who do I meet up with? And they say this name, like, let's go, Juan Camila or something. So he goes to the place and he's like, can I talk to whoever it was that they told him to talk to? And they're like, who? No one like that works here. And he's like, no, 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 I remember the, like this message and he showed them like the name. He's like this one. And they're like, no, never heard of her. And then he calls this number disconnected. And then he's trying to message. He's sending like a few messages in a row. Obviously he's de decline, decline, decline because the number's disconnected. He goes to the website and he gets this website down, gone. So they're really, really good tricksters. So don't get got. Before you come or right now, if you're in Colombia, first thing to do is call up your credit card company and put a limit on your spend, whether it's $500 or a thousand or something, just limit it so that even if a criminal gets your card, they can't spend like 10, 20 grand on your credit card and then you have a big problem later. Also learn the quickest way to cancel your card. So as soon as you realize it's not like 10 hours of calls and stuff to the bank, it can just be as easy as jump on an app and boom, cancel. Also finally think, is it worth it? At the end of the day, any fuck up is gonna cost you like five, 10, maybe 50 bucks, but it's not worth drawing unnecessary attention to yourself in a public place and making people angry. There's a lot of people who grew up in a different way to us and they can be more violent. So you don't want anyone to have a reason to come after you. So yeah, maybe you didn't get that food exactly how you wanted. Just let it go, man, chill. Most of the times people get in trouble here is because they take unnecessary risks or they aren't properly educated. And most of the situations could have been easily avoided with a bit more caution. So now you got all the education, just be smart and you'll be fine. Have fun and enjoy this amazing country.